we have an area problem and this is a parameterized function here. It's an ellipse and they don't tell us the A and the B values. That's okay. Uh, we're going to assume they're positive. Uh, what does an ellipse look like when you graph it? Well, it doesn't necessarily look like a circle, but if I don't know A and B, I don't know uh, which axis is bigger than the other. The biggest X gets is A and negative A, and Y goes up from negative B to be a positive B. All right, when we get the area, we have a few choices. We can use symmetry here. If this is not a circle, I'll just draw a tall ellipse. If you would find the area of this, that's one quarter of the total area. And so all we need to do is figure out one quarter of this area. And what t value starts here? Well, I want my x coordinate to be big. So how do I make cosine big? t is zero. And at the top, what t value would we have going this direction at the top? Well, I want my x coordinate to be zero and my y coordinate to be big. So that would be pi over two. So those are my two t values, zero to pi over two. Now I have a choice here. I could either do the regular integral like this with vertical bars, and that would be a dx integral. And it would look like integral of y dx, my area would equal y dx, or I could do horizontal bars. And if I did that, my area would equal integral x dy. Now, the previous problem, I did a y dx integral the regular way. Let's do an x dy this time. So I already have x is a cos t, y is a, a b, sine t, so uh, dy is y prime dt, and y prime is b cos t dt, that's dy. All right, we're ready to sub these in, integral x, which is a cos t, times that dy, which is times b cos t dt. And we've already determined our t values go zero to pi over two. And how do we integrate this? Well, a and b are constants, so you could bring that product outside. So we have cos squared t dt. Uh, how do you do this? Use the half angle. And you can flip back in your book and it's back in chapter three to integrate this.